Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the simple series of my 65816 assembly programming tutorials. We've got a little example today on the Super Nintendo, if I select the right window, we can move a little graphic and this little smiley around the screen. Now this is actually being done with the tile map. It may look like a sprite, but it's technically a tile. So we're moving a little graphic and we're doing this with the joystick. So remote, I'm controlling with keys, but this is um, the joystick interface we're using. Now, this example today is from my new book, which is called Learn Multi-Platform Assembly with GB Akimas Volume 2. It's a self-contained book. You don't need to read the first one. It covers ARM Thumb 65816, CTX 809, PDP 11, and RISC 5. So it's basically the same as the first one, just with some new systems. And this is one of the examples from it. So what we're looking at today is a simple example that could be used as a template for a little game or program of some kind. And we're going to be using 65816 code and this will compile with the WLADX assembler. Okay, so let's go over and let's take a look at the code for today's example. So here it is, this is the file, this is joystick.asm. Now this is included in the book but you can download it for free from my website so you don't need to have read the book to get the example for today. Now you'll see at the start, now I did discuss this before in the Hello World example but we'll quickly go over it again. For WLADX to assemble a program, it actually needs the uh, structure of the ROM cartridge that it's supposed to be building defined. Now, I'm defining a very simple ROM cartridge with just one block that is um, 20,000 in size here, so we're defining that here. Um, and so basically, this is the, is the simplest form, if you will, that we can define to have a running program. Now, our cartridge starts at memory address 8,000 here. And at the very start, what we're doing is we are actually switching into 16-bit mode. This is 65816 native mode. First of all, we're disabling the interrupts, and then we are clearing the carry, and then we're transferring the carry to the emulation flag with the XCE command, which turns on the native mode. Okay. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to set up the state of the memory and accumulator and also the X and Y registers. Now, the memory and accumulator, we're going to keep as 8-bit functionality. But the X and Y registers, we're going to start off in 16-bit modes. So we're resetting the bit that relates to X and Y there with the rep command. And we are using this assembler directive index to tell the assembler that we are using a 16-bit index X and Y registers. The others are still 8-bit, the memory and the accumulator there. So then what we're doing here is we are setting up the screen. So we've got a, a various um, registers, memory map registers here we need to set up with various values here that we're, we're not really going to go into because they're a little bit technical. We just need to understand that we need to send the correct values to these to get a working screen. The other thing we need to do is we need to set up colors. Now our graphic today is four colors. It's, it's a 16 color screen, but we're only using four of the colors. So we're setting color zero, one, two, and three. And I believe these are black, purple, cyan, and white, the colors that we're using for today. And then what we're doing next is we're transferring our bitmap into memory, into VRAM. So we have a 24-bit address for our bitmap here, the low byte, the mid byte, and the high upper byte here, and we're loading those into LH and HLU. Uh, I use the EZ80 um, definitions here. So we've got a HL triple, a, th a three byte and 24 bit value in the zero page here. The low part is L, the mid part, so the 16 bit part, if you will, is H. And then the, the extra 24 bit part is HLU, the upper part of the HL triple there. So that's um, what we're using here. And that's what we're defining our source bitmap address in this HL definition here. Okay, we're then specifying the destination and we're using port 2116, the memory mapped register there. And we're writing using the 16 bit X register, the VRAM destination of 1000, which is the first tile that we're going to change here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer our source data from HL to the destination and we need to transfer two bytes for each um, VRAM memory address. These are 16 bit addresses, so each one takes two bytes. And so we're writing one byte to 2119 and then one byte to 2118 and we're repeating until we've done the entire file into the entire bitmap there now let's take a look at our bitmap as i said in the hello world example the format's a little bit weird on the Super Nintendo. Basically, we have to write um, bit plane 0 and 1 first. Now, the way I'm using those ports, they are reversed. So that is bit plane 1's data here with just the eyes and the mouth. And bit plane 0's data is here, which is the body of the face, if you will. And then after we've done all eight lines of our um, tile, we then do bit planes 2 and 3, which, of course, you'd need for 16 colors. But all of these are zeros here. 
Now, I'm, I'm not quite sure why they've used this format, but um, that is how we have to transfer the data on the Super Nintendo. So that's, that's what we're going to do. So that's, um, that's our smiley data there. So we're transferring that here. We're then resetting the initial scroll position here. We're clearing the tile map here. We're using tile zero, which is our blank tile. We actually defined two tiles as well as the smiley. We defined an empty tile here with all zeros. So we are using that to remove the player from the screen and we're using tile one, the smiley, to draw the player to the screen. We'll have a look at those in just a moment. So we're using that zero tile as well to clear the tile map and that's what we're doing here. Now the tile map is, has 400 entries in, he in hexadecimal that is. So that's uh, 32 by 32 basically, the tile map size, at least for the visible screen. Um, so we need to write two zero bytes for each entry in the tile map. So that's what we're doing here. And then we're decreasing that 16 bit X and repeating until we've cleared the entire tile map here. Uh, tile map's clear and we've got our graphics set up. So now we're turning on the screen here and we are setting the brightness and enabling the screen here. So our screen is now ready. Now what we're going to do next is a little bit interesting. Before we reset the X flag in the um, flags to enable the 16-bit mode here for the X register, we're now setting it back to 8 bits. Here we're setting that again, turning on the 8-bit flag here for the X and Y registers. And we're telling the assembler that our index registers are now 8-bit. And that's because the X and the Y coordinate of our players and smiley are going to be using 8-bit registers here for our code. So we've switched back to 8-bit mode here. We do actually switch back to 16-bit mode for the X register for just a moment here um, for our crude delay loop. It's because our delay was too small if it was 8-bit, so we're switching it to 16-bit there for a nice long delay. Very crude delay loop, loop there, but it'll do for this example. But we're switching back to 8-bit after the delay has finished for the rest of our code to function. So we, we can basically switch back between 8 and 16-bit as often as we want, really. So that's what we can do. Okay, so how about actually drawing this player to the screen? Well, what we're basically doing is exactly the same as the previous example with regards to printing characters to the screen, and we're just printing smileys now. So either we're going to print tile one, which is the smiley, or tile zero, which is the blank sprite, basically the blank graphic, removing the smiley. We're taking the Y position of our smiley and we're effectively multiplying this by 32 to calculate the line down the screen. We're then adding the X position to calculate the X position. Now the um, VRAM base of the tile map is, is the memory address is zero, so we don't need to add anything for that. Um, so this is calculating in the HL 16-bit pair, it's just a 16-bit address here, the VRAM destination that we need to write to to show the tile to the screen. What we then need to do is wait for VBlank. So we are testing port 4212 and we are testing the top bit and to seeing when we're in VBlank and when we are, we need to select the VRAM destination. Now, before we used the X register in the Hello World example to do this, because the X register was 16-bit in that case, but now it's 8-bit. And so this time we're doing it manually, writing the two low and high parts of the 16-bit pair to 2116 and 2117. That selects the VRAM destination. Then we just write our tile number. Now, our tile number is just a single byte. So the top byte of the 16-bit tile number and the 16-bit pattern data at that tile address, if you will. The top byte is zero, so we're writing that to 2119 here. And then the low byte, the second byte, is the tile number, which we're writing to 2118, which will be a one or a zero, depending on if we're drawing our smiley or our blank there. So that is how we're drawing our smiley to the screen. Okay, the one final thing that we need to do is read in from the joystick. Well, how do we do that? It's a little bit of a pain on the Super Nintendo. Basically, um, the way I'm doing it, you can use the firmware, but I, the way I'm doing it is I'm strobing, it's strobing the old fashioned port. Now, 4016 is the port that is connected to the joystick and we have to send a strobe to that. So what we do is we write a one to that port and then we write a zero. So you can see I've loaded X with one, written that, decreased it down to zero and written it again. So we're sending one zero to 4016 and that strobes it and basically tells it to start sending its data. And then every time we read in from that port, we will get a single bit of the directions of that joystick. So what we're doing here in a loop eight times is we're reading in from 4016 and shifting a single bit out of the accumulator into the H entry in the zero page here. And this is just getting one direction each time, but if we do that eight times, we will get all of our directions. So we now, when we run that, have our directions and that's what we're going to use within our main loop. Now our main loop will read in from the joystick and it will test 
the joystick and when that is zero then none of the directions are pressed and we will just wait until something is pressed before we start our actions. Now when something has been pressed we are removing the player from the screen placing a blank tile in the place the smiley was and then we are testing each of these directions. This is going to test the up direction here. And if this bit is zero, then the up direction is not pressed and we would skip this next section. But if up is pressed, then the next thing we want to do is check the Y position of the player. If the player is already right at the top of the screen, we don't want to move them any further because they'd go off the screen. And if we tried to draw that, we could corrupt our memory, which we don't want to do. So we are checking if we're already at the top of the screen. And if we are, we're skipping. And, uh, and assuming that the up direction isn't processed. But if the up direction is to be processed, we're decreasing the Y register that's moving our smiley up the screen. When we want to move down the screen, this is the down direction we're testing, we do the same. 27 is the bottom of the screen. If we're not at the bottom of the screen, we increase the Y position moving down the screen. And then we do the same for left. And then we do the same for right. Exactly the same procedure, just testing a different bit each time and testing the X register instead of the Y register now and of course moving the X register instead of the Y register. The final thing we do in the loop is we draw the new player position after any changes have occurred if they did occur. Now if the player pressed the fire button then none of these directions will have occurred but we would just draw the smiley back in the same place and it's so quick we won't even see it. So there we go. So that's how this simple routine is moving a smiley around the screen. So there we go. So that is the end of today's example. As I say, you're welcome to go to my website and download the source code, the build scripts and all of that kind of thing and try it out yourself. And if somehow you manage to make use of it in some amazing way and build a, the best game the world has ever seen and make a hundred billion dollars, you're welcome to it. You don't need to even give me credit for it. I'm, I'm kind of doubtful you can do that, but I wish you all the best of luck in that endeavor if you think you can. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. And if you want to support my content and see the book, please um, take a look at the um, comments below where there should be a link to buy the book on Amazon. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.